This is episode 54 of the Just Ask Joey podcast. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Just ask Joey. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I am your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over idiocy. And as you can see, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, I am fully decked out in my Giants gear because the Giants bullpen is driving me freaking crazy and we can't hold a damn lead. And I'm hoping that I can... Get a little juju going by wearing Giants gear and stuff all the time. You know, it's a very uh, superstitious sport. Fingers crossed. Come on. We got to get these Dodgers. Hell, we got to get in the wild card. Bullpen. Please. Save a damn game. Please. Okay. So today's episode has absolutely nothing to do with baseball. But I'm fired up after that horrific loss last night to the damn Dodgers. Urgh. Frustrating. But okay, so today's episode has to do with adapting. We live in an adapt or die economy. And the people that are having the hardest time in this economy, which is killing it right now, are people that are not adapting, people that are not adjusting, people that are sentimental about the way they made their money, they're sentimental about the time they put into their craft. And it's hard not to be, but you either adapt or you die. You guys seen that, uh, that South Park episode where the aliens came and it was like actual aliens, not illegal aliens. And they're like, they took our jobs. And everybody's like, they took our jobs. Damn it, they took our damn. They took our damn. They took our damn. That's what we're doing right now. And it's so irritating to watch it's so irritating to watch this this presidential election come through here and people are like they're gonna bring back jobs they're bringing back jobs and you want to go no they're not those jobs are never coming back you think taxes and tariffs are going to bring jobs back you think not importing goods from china is going to make it so we make the goods here come on man be realistic No matter what taxes or tariffs or whatever you put in place, it's always going to be cheaper to have it made in China. It's always going to be cheaper to have it made in India, South America, wherever, any place but here. We're an expensive, like, there's a reason why our economy is so strong. We're an expensive ass country to live in, and we're an expensive ass country to have employees in unions, minimum wages, all that stuff. It's easy just to ship it across the waters if you started a business and you could do it way cheaper just by hiring a few different people someplace else wouldn't you do it stop being sentimental about about what you think is supposed to happen just look at the trends blue collar jobs are going other places so you either need to reapply yourself or you need to take your skills and apply them someplace else or you need to move to a place that needs your blue collar skills we're, we're a country that was, that was built on immigration, a country that was built on people leaving situations that were not beneficial to them, that were not beneficial to their families, and crossing a freaking ocean, like months, crossing an ocean, weeks crossing an ocean to a place where you, they didn't speak anything the same language that you spoke, you didn't know anything about what's going on there, but you were going based on the idea that you were going to make your life better. And all of a sudden, we just stopped. We're, we're waiting for Trump or Hillary to come into office to save our jobs. They're not going to save your jobs. There's nothing they can do that's going to save your jobs. We're waiting for Trump or Hillary to come in and save the economy. Guess what? The economy is crushing it right now. If you're not taking part in that crushing economy, that's a total you problem. 
And the president has nothing to do with the freaking economy anyways. Like, let's be real. Clinton, oh, he balanced the budget. Oh, my God. What was booming then? The internet. B- boom. Economy does really well. What's happening in, when Bush is president? 9-11. People worried about terrorism. People, uh, the, the, the bubble bursting on the housing crisis. That's not a presidential problem. That's not a presidential issue. The president has nothing more, no more to do with the, with the economy going up than it has to do with the economy going down. So that's one thing. But when did we start complaining? All these guys that are asking for, whether it's Republican or Democrat, government's too big, government's too small. Everybody's looking for the government to do something. Oh, the government's too big. But keep our jobs. Well, the government's too small. So expand government and keep our jobs. We're all doing the same thing. It's, it's pathetic. This is an adapt or die economy. And it always has been. I'm pretty sure cart making in the United States went down after Henry Ford started making cars on an assembly line. I'm also pretty sure that after the iPod came out, that uh, CD players uh, went down in popularity drastically. Now, can you imagine if the cart makers unions or the CD player unions are like, bring back our jobs? That'd be ridiculous. That's like a runner running a race and then, oh, I'm going to stop here. And then getting mad that people are passing them. Hey, hey you can't, you, nope, you can't pass me. You can't pass me. I'm, uh, I'm standing here. So you need to stand here too. You realize how ridiculous that sounds? That's what we're doing. We're going, oh, we need our we need to make cars here, or we need to do this here, or we need more engineers here, or we need this or that. It's like go where the jobs are. Or reapply your skills. Or go back to school. There's all these things that we can do, and it's always been an evolving economy. And this may be just because I'm aware of it now. Maybe it's always been like this. But it seems like we used to be much more willing to just suck it up, make the changes that we needed to make in order to provide for our families, in order to have the types of lives that we wanted to have, and we would just get it done. But now we're sitting there going, oh, my rent's too high. I would like my rent lower. May I please have it lower? You're like, your rent's too high? Move. Um, my job does not pay me enough money. May I have more money, please? get a new job. It's like a, we're like the giving tree. We're the kid who, who comes and, and loves the tree and hangs onto the tree and then comes back periodically throughout his life. And I need a house. Take my limbs. I need a boat. Cut my trunk. I just need a place to sit. That's us. The giving tree. They, like People think the United States is like the giving tree. It's stupid. We're the land. This is the land of opportunity. This is the land of immigrants. This is the land of immigration, of migrating, of, of building new lives, of, of creating something new. This is the land of Thomas Edison. This is the land of George Washington Carver. This is the land of the Gary Vanderchucks, the land of the Ben Franklins, the Rockefellers. When you hit a wall, you go through it, you go over it, you go under it, you go around it, but you don't stand there and go... Um, excuse me, um, can somebody please move this wall? Stop looking to something outside to help you deal with what you need to deal with. Your problems are your problems. They are not the government's problem. They're not the city's problem. They're nobody's problem. They're your problems. Like, here's here's a reality check. Here's the reality check. There are jobs that are not necessary anymore. There are people in jobs that are not necessary anymore. And that's okay. You need to find new skills, new jobs, new places that require your services. You have to be a lifelong learner if you want to make sure you never get stuck. Lifelong learning. When the computer comes out, learn about the computer. When a new program comes out, learn about the new program. Here's a huge one. It's coming up. Uh, virtual reality, VR, it's going to happen. And you can either sit back 
and not learn about it and not use it and not understand it. But then you can't complain later on when things start passing you by because VR is taking off. That's the next phase of, of major stuff in technology is VR. So you can either sit back and do your like email marketing and do work on like your website, desktop traffic. You can do all those things, but then you can't complain when people are like, well, why aren't you doing VR? Well, why aren't you doing Snapchat? Well, why aren't you doing social media stuff more? Well, why aren't you doing better stuff? You have to adapt. You either are a lifelong learner and you adapt or you die and you can't complain about it. It's complaining is not going to do anything for you. You got to learn. You have to look at your situation for what it really is, not what you want it to be, not what you hope it's supposed to be, not what it's always been. You got to look, look out like 10 years from now. Where's that job going to be? What's the last 10 years kind of shown you? That's what you have to do. You have to be prepared. Lifelong learning. Don't get pissed off because things aren't the way you want them to be. Adapt, adjust, and re-attack. That's it. Adapt or die. Those are your choices. You have to focus on the big, the main picture, the main focus. It's your family. It's providing for your family. Now, if that means changing jobs, change jobs. That means going back to school, back to, go back to school. That means busting your ass more, bust your ass more. That means moving, move. These are all options, but you have to look at the big picture. You got to let your ego out of the way. You have to let your romanticism out of the way about the guy that worked in the one company for 30 years and got the gold watch or whatever. You got to drop all that stuff. Adapt or die. And you can't complain when the jobs are going away because they've been going away for a long time. And you can't depend on companies because companies don't care about you. You're one employee. There's a lot of other people that can do exactly what you do. Their job is for survival. Your job is for survival. Those don't always go together. You got to look out for yours. They have to look out for theirs. And that's okay. Get yourself in the right mindset. Lifelong learning. Adapt. Look forward. Check the rear. See what's been happening. Look for, look for some patterns. And adjust. And everything will be great. I'll see you guys next time. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Go, go, go.